Just good morning. Just good morning. I just woke up. Look at these clouds. Those clouds are nice. I love winter time because the clouds like that. I just woke up here in Sherlock. I may have said that already. I'm still making my brain work. And uh, I think I lost my last hair tie. Which means I'm gonna be cutting this mop off soon if I can't find a new one. I've got a very, I've got a very specific hair tie. You guys may have known. Uh, sorry about the wind noise. Still figuring it out. Uh, so today I'm gonna go take you guys to my buddy Nick's at Renown, Renown Reptiles, going up to Sacramento. I'm giving a. This wind is driving me crazy. I'm giving a talk up at the Northern California Herpetological Society on the effects of social media on the hobby and by default, just on society in general. And I'm not a big fan of public speaking necessarily, but I'm, I need to get over it and I'm working on getting over it. I'm getting over it. Mini crisis averted. I found the lucky hair tie. Sack down, here we come. Is this Nicholas? It is a banana inchy female that popped out from a male making banana inchy cinnamon this season. So I bred that male a bunch of times and never randomly hit a female, which there's a small percent chance, you know, that you can hit a female. But uh, yeah, I was happy, so I held her back. We're at Nick's house. Uh -huh. We're in Nick's snake room. It's it's very free. It's very free to me in here. Yeah, <laughs> it's feeling pretty free to me. It's. It's everywhere. <laughs> that's that's the only reason I'm here. I wouldn't have been here otherwise. <laughs> have nothing to do with it. I had to switch out all these racks just for this visit. It sucked, man. <laughs> I'm so broke going into Christmas. <laughs> I remember the first time. I'm, I'm thinking back to the first time we hung out. Now when it was like we were at, hanging out with everybody. It was at Tinley. It had to been Tinley. Tinley. It was. We were going. To, we were dinner at the Tin Fish. Oh yeah. That I was, picture. I was going too far. I think I've got a video clip here. Of you like ascertaining the fact and. Let everybody else know. I think this guy's done. We can cut him yeah. off right now. I was sitting behind you and you were telling a nice story and being very passionate, which you never are. Um, and so I made sure I shared it and just kind of said, hey, don't serve this guy any more drinks so he's not going to make it through the rest of the evening with us. I made it through the rest of the evening because of my sound advice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I was in the bushes at some point. Yeah, that's true. I don't think Miguel was in the bushes too, actually. Yeah. We joined each other there. We were in the bush, definitely in Chicago. <laughs> we were in the bush. Well, let's. I, I just really want to see all the snakes, man. Okay. Yeah. I, I was gonna at first. I was gonna do like say let's do like three snakes because oh. I'm running all over the place. I'm gonna go talk at the thing tonight, and that's gonna be yeah, part yeah, of the yeah. video too. But I kind of just want you to let you show whatever snakes you want. Okay. Um. We could do that. Let's start off with the banger. So this snake came from someone you may all know. Um, the snake was produced by Brian Cusco at Triple B Reptiles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but you should check him out. Never heard of him. Uh, he's a weird cat. Anyways, um, so I actually got this. He was kind enough to donate a pastel inchy clown female to the US Ark auction. And because of his generosity, I felt that it should be bought for what it was worth. And that's what the ending bid pretty much ended up being. So. Everybody wins. Win! Should we go bigger snakes? Oh, dude, let's check out a big snake, yeah. Do you want to just see the massive one? Let's see massive. Let's go massive. Oh, the massive poop. All right. Now, she eats the same thing everybody else eats. Um, I think she's around 5,000 grams. You, got, you guys got to keep in mind, Nick's like 6'4", okay? <laughs> yeah, so she's almost a good five feet. Hold, hold it out, hold on, hold on. Like in front of you, towards the, yeah, there, there you go. Now, now we get a little forced perspective and make her look even bigger. Yeah. But I just want to do that for, because, I mean, you are 6'4", you're yeah. a fairly large human. Right, if we had Harrison holding this, it'd be like an anaconda. <laughs> 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 Love you, Harrison. But the next one I want to show you is the most valuable snake in my collection, far and beyond. 
And it is a normal male. And the reason he's so valuable is this is my first pet that I ever got. When I was 10 years old, he was already six, came from the original owner, which was my mom's hairdresser. And his name is Monty, and he's the first pet I ever got, and he's still kicking, he's 27 years old. That's very impressive, man. Never bred him, no desire to, but uh, this has probably been the most constant thing around that I'm always remembered for, even from when I was a kid. Oh, do you still have snakes? No, I still have that snake and many others. So uh, this guy started it all. All credit to Monty Python, the original gangster. So <laughs> Nice, dude. I like it. <laughs> this snake I always like. I don't know why I'm a... She's pretty simple genetics-wise, but just looks like she's on fire. And she's super granity. And the sides are beautiful. The belly's awesome. She is a pastel hidden gene woma yellow belly. And I'm throwing her to my clown pied male this year because I think hidden gene woma clowns are awesome and I think hidden gene woma pieds are awesome. And pastel and yellow belly doesn't hurt. It's a good looking snake. Yeah, I like it a lot. So, this little male here just did some awesome work um, in 2019. He's a GHI Mojave pinstripe het clown male. And we got a clutch that just shed that came from him and two more dropping and super excited about the pairing, the results, all of the above. Um, but this guy's very valuable to me just because I like a lot of what his genes can do as far as busy patterns go and, and darker stuff. So we'll see that clutch, bro. I haven't showed it off yet. Oh, well, first time for everything. That's right, we can sneak peek it for, only for Triple B though. Or actually, this is Brian Cusco. So the pairing was a GHI Mojave Pinstripe Het Clown to Clown. So these are all variations and breakdowns of the full potential of the father. What are you doing back there, girl? Because she's the only female in the clutch. These snakes are obviously sexist. They have <laughs> segregated themselves based on gender, 100%. Oh man, that's some, that's some pretty, uh... I'm, I'm I'm sorry that you have I'm triggered. Somebody, yeah, triggered. You should be. I'm upset. There's a lot of boys. There's a lot of boys in there. They're yeah. not having a sausage. I had great odds and terrible odds, <laughs> all at the same time. So I mean, you can't complain when you hatch out two GHI pinstripe clowns. Now they're both male, but they're incredible animals. And I don't think there's Mojave in either one of them, um, just based on the pattern. And how Mojave reacts with the other genes. Um, now, why why would you prefer to have more females than males in a, in any given clutch or this particular clutch or? At this point in where I'm at in breeding, having more high end females to then sit and grow up because these things aren't going to be ready in a year. You know, it's going to take time, and I'm not power feeding anything. We go for longevity and health of the animals 100% every single time. Um, and so I'd be growing these up over the next two to three years, depending on when the female is ready and then throwing a powerhouse male to that, um, snake. Now, if I had an all gene, the GHI Mojave pinstripe Mojave clown, then yes, I would want it to be male because it's the full thing and it's, it's amazing. Um, if it's a female, obviously I'm holding it back too, but to have only males and no females when you didn't hit the pinnacle out of all the clutch. Um, kind of sucked because it takes away my holdbacks. I'm selling everything in this clutch except for one GHI uh, Mojave Pinstripe, but, or not Mojave, GHI Pinstripe Clown. So the other great part of it though is I have awesome animals for sale. So I have GHI Clowns. I'm gonna have a GHI Pinstripe Clown for sale. I mean, even this one alone is a powerhouse. If I, whoop. <laughs> Proving it, proving his point. Yeah. Um, this is just a GHI Mojave Het Clown, but if you guys all have seen a GHI Mojave Clown before, they are insane. They look incredible. Um, so just having this little guy right here in your collection, if you already have clown females or Het Clowns, you know, six months to a year, you can throw this to them and make beautiful animals that are also very valuable in our reptile hobby. So just trying to look at things with a little bit more of a business mind as you kind of Seeing the trend lately is people being more open and talking about investments in ball pythons and how you can do well. And even at this side, I have about a hundred breeding animals and this is my one holdback and hatching rack. And this is my comfort zone. This is 
where I can manage everything by myself, I can take care of my animals, I can afford to feed them, I can afford all the bills associated with them, I don't want to overreach or overstep and have animals suffer. So this is where, I mean, out of how many females I have breeding every year, I get really good numbers. Um, just because I know the animals individually, I can watch these little signs and I'm doing this all without an ultrasound machine. machine so you kind of need to know your females and when they're acting different. Um, so yeah, this is a comfortable level for me. I do it all by myself, no help. So um, I know a lot of people do that too. Nothing to hang your hat on, but I also coach two teams and have a full-time job and also need to be a dad and a, a spouse. So this is my comfort level and I feel like uh, it's my sweet spot right now and I'm very happy with it and the results are kind of booming. So excited. I hope that I have that kind of ability to speak when I speak tonight, and that was that was great. Nice, was that nice good? Speaking. Did yes. I? Yeah, how you many spoke well? Less ums. You spoke. You sounded like a, a s professional speaker. Oh, sweet. <laughs> that was fantastic. Because when it's just me in the camera, I edit out probably thirty-seven ums out of every video. I'm not gonna edit a lick of that. <laughs> he climbs me like tree. <laughs> I do. I got the one more animal that I really want to see. What? Yours this here. It's in. It's in your office. <laughs> okay. And it's an animal that I kind of I want. Oh yeah. Let's go check him out. So normally there's a big plant in here, but I made the mistake of buying a plant that goes dormant in the winter. And so this is Soli. He's an Abronia graminea from the Mexican cloud forest. And cool little snapple fact about these guys is they can withstand some really dramatic temperature changes, which is atypical for reptiles. Um, anywhere down to the 50s or even 40s in some cases and then they don't want to really be anything close to 80 degrees um, just because they're higher elevations but in higher elevations there's bigger temperature drops. So we've seen animals in two of Nick's reptile rooms here. That one right there with the abronia, the ball python room with also the blue tongues, retex. Uh, he's got a third room here. I'm not going to show you guys. Nick does have his own YouTube channel that he uploads on fairly regularly, correct? Yep. Good? Once Good. A week. Once a week. So you got regular contact coming from here. I'm going to put a link down in the description for Nick's channel so you can check it out. He's obviously a well-spoken dude, even more well-spoken than me. And he's uh, one, of a, one of our fellow Californians here. Northern California, yeah. a whole different breed of species than those guys down there. Absolutely. 100%. 100% different. Hella. So. <laughs> Hella different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So check out the link down in the description for Nick, please. And uh, Nick, thank you for having yeah, brother. us in your house, man. No problem. Everybody knows a little button and some mistletoe. Take it on, bitty bitty. Came, I saw, I talked. I would like to thank Sacramento and the NorCal Herb Society for having me. That was good for me, very good for me to come out and talk to people like that because I need practice. And that was good practice. So thank you guys for being an awesome audience. Uh, I, uh,. Oh, and thank you, Haley, for drawing me this wonderful picture. I'm going to hang this on the snake room wall. Oh, nice job, sis. Uh, I just kind of wanted to leave you guys what I summarized. I ended up talking for about an hour, which is much longer than I expected being able to talk. Thankfully, audience participation allowed me to uh, not have to rely completely on my brain to talk the entire time, which was much appreciated, for sure. Thank you, all you folks over there. That was really good. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And uh, I just want to kind of leave you guys here that weren't at the talk with a little summary of what I kind of summarized that summarization. <laughs> it was basically uh, that I do believe that all of us can get along despite any differences we may have. And that it's actually our differences that make us the beautifully diverse world of people that we are. And, uh, and that may be the reason that the internet cannot be relied solely for our communication because it's basically at its core a bunch of ones and zeros and although those ones and zeros may be arranged in very complex sequences I don't think they could ever be complex enough to truly handle all the different vibrations that flow from person to person in a face-to-face -face interaction so internet's a great tool social media platforms are a great way and a very powerful way to be able to communicate with one another across the world 
but we can't rely on it solely. We need to get face to face and have those things. So I'll see you guys at the Anaheim show, yeah? Let's do it.